One of the main things that we find is that the practices who are growing and who are thriving, they are able to develop trust with their patients on a higher level, in a faster way, in a more empathetic and genuine manner than the practices who struggle and the practices who stall out. Since the beginning of dental implant machines existence, we have had the distinct honor of working with over 500 dental practices across the United States and Canada. And these are practices who have come to us with the goal to add more dental implant patients into their practice. During this time, we have had the privilege to work with hundreds of clients who have added well more than $1 million in production to their practices. But at the same time, we've also had the disappointment of seeing dozens of practices struggle to add new patients. And that means that their practice growth has actually stalled. From all of our observations and considering this category of customers who have added to their practices and their practices have continued to thrive and grow, even during challenging times like COVID or the current economic state of the dental implant economy. And looking at the practices who have stalled or have become frustrated with their practice growth, we've been able to observe a few common themes between the, the practices that find themselves in each of these categories. One of the main things that we find is that the practices who are growing and who are thriving, they are able to develop trust with their patients on a higher level, in a faster way, in a more empathetic and genuine manner than the practices who struggle and the practices who stall out. Dental implant procedures are unique in that they require a significant financial investment from the patient. They represent a significant life decision. It's going to impact this patient for many, many years to come in a positive way and that they're going to get function and aesthetic results out of the procedure, but they're also going to be paying for it for a long time if they don't have the money up front. Either way, they're significantly investing financial resources into doing this procedure with you. Not only are they going to spend tens of thousands of dollars, but they're also looking at a major surgery with recovery and with all of the anxiety or the stress or the worry that might come with having a medical procedure done. Compound that with the fact that the typical full arch patient has not been in a dental clinic in many, many years. Research has found that typically the full arch patient that comes from marketing has not been in a clinic in seven to nine years on average. So eventually after enough time, enough wear and tear, enough neglect, on their situation, they found themselves in this serious enough state where they're actually just forced now to have to address their dental situation. It's not something that they're proactively choosing to do. They're quartered and they are pigeonholed into this situation where they now have to go out and they have to address it. This is the stage where they are typically beginning their research and they're looking for possible solutions and they're looking for possible providers who they hope can help address their issues and their concerns. Typically, this patient is anxious about the fact that they need to fix their problem. Rather than voluntarily and proactively addressing their dental needs over time, this deteriorating condition and the health that they find themselves in has made it now urgently important for them to take action right now. Typically, this patient will also choose a provider where two things come together, trust and affordability. With this in mind, full arch providers who are trying to attract new patients, they should aim to provide an atmosphere and an environment in their practice that helps these two types of new patients to feel most comfortable, welcomed, and valued. As the practice and as the dentist or CEO of your practice, you should aim to accomplish two things when it comes to new patient growth. You've got to help the patient like and trust you as a provider, and you've got to help the patient to like and trust dental implants as a solution to the problem that the patient is having. When the patient's trust is high enough, our experience has been that the patient will find a way to pay for treatment. And it reminds me of a story for one of our clients who has actually mastered 
this art of helping patients to like and trust him. This dentist had a patient come to him for an implant consultation four years ago. During that consultation, the treatment coordinator did a great job of asking discovery questions, showing empathy, and actively listening to the patient. By the time the dentist joined the consultation and showed the patient the results of their CBCT scan, the patient was already very trusting in this practice and in the fact that dental implants would solve his problem. Thanks in large part to the empathy and the listening and the questions that the treatment coordinator did a great job of having with the patient prior to this. The next hurdle to cross for this patient was now affordability. The patient was denied by each of the client's third party financing options. With a high level of trust already created, the dentist pointed to the scan up on the screen and asked one critical question. Do you see how this is hurting your daily life and affecting your overall health? Your teeth and your dental health is slowly killing you. Now, the dentist didn't say this to fear or to place fear into the mind of the patient. With this high level of trust that had already been created and his newly found diagnosis in mind, the patient left the practice. And unbeknownst to the dentist, the patient went out and they got a second job putting roofs on homes and on businesses in the evening hours and on the weekends just to earn extra money. Six months later, the patient returned to the practice with a duffel bag full of cash, ready to pay for his dual arch treatment in cash. I just love this story because it highlights the fact that with enough motivation and with a high enough level of trust, we can help our patients to take the steps that they need in order to change their lives and overcome those two biggest hurdles, which were trust and affordability. The treatment coordinator at this practice really played a critical role in the creation of that trust. If you remember from that story, she did three key things. She asked discovery questions to find out the patient's motivation she showed empathy and helped the patient feel like he wasn't alone. And then she also actively listened to the patient's story. By the time the dentist came into the room, the patient already felt a significant difference between what he expected to feel at a dental appointment and then what this master treatment coordinator was actually giving him. This foundation of trust set the dentist up with the right environment to speak with boldness when giving his diagnosis that the patient's dental health was slowly killing him. Rather than getting upset and storming out of the practice, the patient instead trusted that what the dentist said was true. And he felt like he was in good, safe hand with this provider and with this practice. Those feelings of trust were strong enough in this situation to motivate the patient to work 80 hours per week to work multiple jobs and to save all of his money to put towards his new teeth. Stories like these are what motivate us at Dental Implant Machine to work so hard for our clients. We're in the business of changing lives. If you're ready to change more lives than you're currently able to change, then let's connect on a quick call to see if we can help you create stories like these with your patient. After helping to grow hundreds of other practices, we're confident that we can do the same for you. Please click the link in this post to become our next success story. We really look forward to working with you.